got it. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our digital marketing series. This is our fourth session, and we do hope that you'll take the opportunity to check out the recordings on the others. This has been a great series where we can deep dive uh, each session into one of these topics and really start to better understand and appreciate these tools. So we thank the Watertown Daily Times media team for uh, presenting this series and just want to give a shout out to my partners at the Chambers of Commerce across the North Country for partnering uh, also to get this information out to our members. With that, I will introduce Rudy Clark to uh, get the presentation going. Thanks, Brooke. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, um, uh, just wanted to say thank you for everybody for coming. And uh, as uh, some of you know, um, I had a, a brain injury about two years ago, and I have good days and bad days. And uh, the last couple of days, the, uh, they haven't been too good for me. So I apologize if I haven't gotten back to your emails, but today I assure you one of my associates will be reaching out to you while I'm uh, out of work uh, for temporarily for the time being. Um, but with that being said, uh, thank you again for coming and I'm going to pass it along to uh, Nancy to, uh, to take the presentation from here. Thank you. Perfect, thank you, Rudy. So welcome back to those who have attended before one of our previous webinars and anybody new, thank you for joining. So today we are going to go over search engine marketing. Oops, go back. And for those of you that who might not know what search engine marketing is, it's also referred to as SEM, Google AdWords, PPC, um, but we will be going over that, explaining what exactly it is. Also go over the buyer's journey where the SEM fits into that piece of the puzzle. Go over the restricted industries that Google does not allow you to run Google ads with. And then talk about how the campaigns are set up with conversions, optimizations, reporting, and a little bit about Google Analytics. So quick little overview there. Um, as Brooke had mentioned, I think um, putting questions in the chat box, we will address those at the end and just have a good open discussion. So what is, what is SEM? So I have an image here um, of, it's called the search engine results page. So basically SEM is going to be Google with specific keywords. We bid on those keywords for your business to show up on that first page. It might be keyword uh, referencing your products or your services. So I have another page here that goes a little bit deeper. So what I did was a search for, as an example, furniture stores in Watertown, New York. As you can see, these say sponsored on them. So that means these are Google um, AdWords, the paid ads that we're talking about. So in our first position here, we have Wayfair. Second position we have, and third, we have two local stores. One's Morrison's Furniture and the other one's Olam's Furniture. Um, so this brings up the question oftentimes, how do I compete against the big box or big companies like Wayfair? So this shows um, that you can compete. It's all about um, bidding on that cost per click and everything that goes into it on the back end. And if you have a team that's strong like ours, uh, who's a Google partner, that's where we can come in and make sure that your ads are showing up when someone's searching for any product services that you are offering within a specific geo area, where this one would be Watertown. So next, let's talk about how it does fit into that buyer's journey. So SEM, when someone is searching for those keywords or products, they're in that bottom phase of the funnel. Uh, bottom phase of the funnel. They know what they want. They need it um, quite like uh, likely. They need it quite fast. So it could be you know you could have a broken plumbing. So someone's going to need those services fairly fast to make sure that um, the whole place isn't flooding, but. Um, you can see where it fits in that bottom part of the funnel. Um, but also with branding and awareness, you want to make sure we can run this on its own, but it is good to have some of these top, the branding and awareness, some of these top uh, tactics as well. 
So by that, I mean any display campaign, streaming TV, something that gets a message out there and gets people a little bit more familiar with your brand. So then when they do go to search on Google for plumbing, whatever that might be, when your ad shows up, there's a little bit of that recall. So somebody will say, oh, I remember seeing this ad and it works well together. So then they're more likely to click on your Google ad. Um, Chris is also here with me too. So Chris, if you wanna jump in with anything, go right ahead. No, I think you covered that really well. I was just going to tie it into the presentation I did last week regarding streaming TV, but I think Nancy covered it pretty well. The, 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 the ideal way to advertise and from a digital perspective is to make sure that you're constantly filling the funnel with brand awareness, recognition, looking for those people that have a particular interest in your product. But as Nancy alluded to, if your pipe just burst and you need to find a plumber tomorrow, you're not as concerned about finding the name that you hear all the time, you want to find somebody close to you and somebody can get there right away. And that's where something like a paid search campaign can, can come in handy. Um, obviously, if you have brand awareness, then somebody's more likely to call you right away because they know your company. And then when somebody does the search for that particular com company or service, they'll be able to find you on that search engine results page. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. So there are some industries that Google does not allow to run on with Google ads. So some of those are listed here on the right with medical, med spas. Oftentimes med spas make promises that may not be um, ethical. <laughs> and then also we have alcohol, tobacco, gambling, political cannabis. Um, any of that is not allowed on Google. But some One of other... the- Oh, I'm sorry, Nancy, go ahead, please. Some of the top industries though that we can focus on, finance, insurance, retail, Travel and tourism, I know that's big in your area. Um, and these can get fairly competitive too. So something that we look at too is a cost per click on each of these, which we'll get into a little bit more. That's what we base the budget on. So when it's more competitive and higher end, like maybe finance and insurance, you're going to see a little higher cost per click. Um, but all in all, there's, um, you know, you can do this for just about any industry you're looking at. Even restaurants is a good one as well. So anyone who's looking to show up, um, if someone's Googling, doing some research, and then even in that bottom part of the funnel where they're looking to convert, that's where we want to make sure that you're uh, running an SEM campaign. One other thing that I was just going to add to that too, along with the medical spas that are restricted, um, a lot of times like supplementation and vitamins could be um, restricted as well based off some of the claims that they'll make. Um, so if you're ever in question, please get in touch with Rudy and let us know if you have any concerns about what you may or may not run. We can always run an audit for you and let you know if it's something that we can do. We'll also have multiple other options and we do have the option to run on Bing as well. So while Google is going to be the primary sandbox in which we play, Bing is also an option for some of these restricted areas as well. Perfect. Thank you. So let's get a little bit deeper into how we actually set up a campaign and the structure. So um, we have the different levels and this, this example on the right here really helps you uh, visualize how these are set up. So if we're on an example of a furniture store, so the campaign would be all encompassing for living room furniture. Although we have sectionals that we're selling along with recliners, we would break those up into two separate ad groups. Underneath each ad group, that's where we get in those keywords. So someone might be in the market for a brown leather sectional. Once someone searches that, your ad, if we've been, you know, if we, if we're doing our part and doing it all right, um, your ad would be showing up next to the competitors. Um, but this just shows that um, you wouldn't have to have one campaign with one focus. You can have multiple um, keywords and ad groups underneath there, depending on what you're selling. Depending on what your products and services are, we can set it up accordingly. And you might ask, how many of those can we have? So it all depends on the budgets. That's where we can get um, what Chris was just saying. We can um, perform an audit. So that would be looking at the geo area um, to see you know, what the competition's like, um, see what the cost per click is for each of these different uh, keywords that we want to use. And then basically back into a budget to see how um, how much you'd have to spend per month in order to compete with anyone else in that area running AdWords as well. Absolutely. And the reason that we structure those with the ad groups is so that we can 
really take a look at what's performing best and optimize towards it. We don't want to overspend in one area and take budget away from another area. So we try to start with a level playing field and then optimize daily, especially in the initial portion of the, of the campaign so that we can see what's performing best. And we can make adjustments. We can add more keywords to it. We can take away keywords. We can add negative keywords, which we'll all go into in a little bit more depth here in just a moment. Perfect. So when we're looking at goals with a SEM campaign, there's two specific ones that we want to keep in mind. We can do overall clicks, which means that's more about the awareness, getting people to click on your ad and then actually go to your website to learn a little bit more and see if uh, it's a good fit for what they're looking for. Or we can um, track conversions. Conversions can be anything from a phone call, a form fill on your website, like if you have a salon, it could be book an appointment. If you have a restaurant, it could be reserved now. So depending on what's most important to you as an advertiser, that's where we'll focus on what the campaign's goals are. And that's super important because when we, um, that's how we're optimizing, like Chris is saying too, that's how we're optimizing towards your goals, whatever conversions that may be. So we want to um, make sure that we're doing the best uh, job for you and getting, so you're seeing a nice ROI too across the board. Anything else with that one, Chris? No, I mean, I think this is just a critical part of any digital advertising campaign. We need to know what your goals are and we need to know how we can back into them and make the proper recommendation. And that goes for every single product here. We're gonna kind of start with, okay, what's your overall goal? Make a recommendation and then probably utilize a combination of products to make sure that we're accomplishing not only your main objective, but also getting you some branding and awareness and some interest goals. So this goes back to what Chris was saying about the keywords too. So when it comes to keywords, you might feel like, what would I have to do? What keywords would I use? That's where you can lean on us. We do all of that for you. So um, we could have anywhere from one to 25 keywords in your campaign. But where we get those is we take a deep look at your website. We look at what Google searches are in general. There's a Google ads keyword planner tool and also just Google trends. What are people searching? Well, they've been looking at in the past couple of months. So there's a science that goes in behind it. It's not just, you know, here's some keywords, let's go with this, but we can share those keywords with you too once we get those created. And then if there's anything that you want to add or take off, um, we can certainly adjust those as needed. But we can start with a pretty robust amount of them. And then um, as the campaign goes, that's where we're tweaking those, we're optimizing, um, making sure that we are um, getting those conversions or clicks that you want. So some Examples of just some keywords for like a high-end restaurant right here would be fine dining, steak and seafood, uh, Wagyu beef, um, things like that. But then also negative keywords are super important. Negative keywords is what you don't want to show up for. So in this example, for a high-end restaurant, if someone's searching for fast food, restaurant jobs in general, subs near me, Big Macs, whatever that might be, anything that uh, is not related to your business, we'll make sure that your ad does not show up when people are searching these negative keywords as they're called. And I would just point out that these resources that are listed here in this box are going to be really helpful tools for anybody who's looking to get in into the game. I use Google Trends a lot and you can actually just plug in your the name of your business, your type of business, or your competitors in your area and look at what the average cost per click is for keywords that would be relevant to your business. Um, so certainly just some tools that you can play around with and things that we utilize every day. We also have additional tools that we utilize, but these are usually just the most um, user friendly. Perfect. Another thing we can do is we base it on the, the geo area. There's multiple ways to target by geo area. We can go as big as a country, state, DMA, but then also right down to a zip code or even a radius. We can have multiple zip codes and radiuses too, depending on where your best customers are. We want to focus on that area to make the campaign as successful as possible. Um, just so you know too, we do optimize performance towards that um, Whatever geo is seeing the most engagement, most conversions. So then naturally the campaign starts learning, oh, okay, here's where our best customers are. Let's focus on these specific areas. Again, Absolutely. Oh, okay. sorry, Nancy, go ahead. I was just going to add that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really important piece to this and something that we can adjust throughout the campaign. So if for some reason, let's say we start with a list of 50 zip codes and you want to pare that down to 25 and hit a smaller area a little bit more, a little bit harder, you know, for 
you know, the last three months of the campaign or something like that. We can absolutely do that and we can certainly give you recommendations along the way. Yep. Always optimizing. It's not set it and forget it. We are in, you know, we want to be in contact with you on a regular basis just to make sure everything is going according to plan. So this slide does have a lot of information on it. However, we just want to show you how in depth these ads can be. So this right here is an actual ad on the search engine results page for Orange Theory. It's a fitness place, but it just shows how deep we can go with these different extensions. So the first one is um, that I want to look at is a call extension. Super important if you're uh, if you do any searches on your mobile device. Say it's for a restaurant specifically too. If you want to make a reservation for later that night, there's a call. Uh, the number is right there. You can click to call. It makes it a nice, easy user experience. Um, and it also is, you know, taking care of one of those conversions that you're, that's important to you. Also, we can go down to the site link extensions, they're called. It's just a matter of saying, where do we want to take people to, on your website? Again, what's important? What are those, what are those conversions? So one could be, oops, go over there. So one could be the membership page. Um, if someone is interested in a membership, let's link them right over to that page. They can find out more information and convert. Same with um, if someone wants to look at a specific class. From the actual ad, they can click this link and go right to that page. In Google's eyes, we want everything to be the most relevant as possible. Um, because you know when things are more relevant, Google says you're doing a good job, gives you an A+. Plus. It helps your ads to show up higher in those uh, results. So the better, um, the better job that we can do making it a nice, easy experience, Google will reward us and, um, and have your ad you know, showing up. It'll be a lower cost per click possibly, but then have you show up in those top three ads when someone's looking for your products and services. Chris, you want anything else on that? No, I think you covered all of it. Yeah, these are definitely important. We can track these conversions very thoroughly in our reporting as well. So. If we put it in call tracking, we'll be able to let you know this person clicked, this person called, and how many of those you saw. Perfect. Let's talk about conversions a little bit more then. So speaking of call tracking, we can certainly use a specific number that will show exactly what calls um, are coming from this campaign, be directly attributed to this campaign. So then um, we record those. We can't record anything that's um, health because of HIPAA, of course. We could see the length of the call, so we could be able to tell if it's um, if it was a longer call. They may have likely booked an appointment. But other than that, we can listen to these calls, which can be a great tool too for your staff. Just to, um, you know, any feedback that you know how they how they could have maybe better handled a call, um, anything like that, just to help you help uh, close some of those conversions along the way. But then also the form fills that we're talking about, it could be just a contact us form. It could be schedule an appointment, whatever that might be. Um, and then the e-commerce sales. If you're selling anything online from your website, we can get very deep into that tracking and then associate a return on uh, investment to have that ROI to show exactly what that is for the campaign. And then those link clicks, like what I was just referring to on the previous page, where people can go directly to whatever page it is that they want, um, that you want them to take an action on. So we have multiple conversions, but again, when we're setting this up, we'd have an onboarding call to see, you know, what's your actual goal, what's most important to you. So then we'll set up the campaign um, to match whatever your needs are with that. And the call tracking, like what we are talking about earlier too. So we can record those calls, the length of each call, but we can have those calls right from the ads on your mobile device, which makes it a super easy process for, for anyone that wants your services. Um, calls to a phone number, specific number on your website. Um, and then, and I mean, mobile site that you have too. So the call tracking is pretty holistic. Um, anywhere that someone's uh, calling, you'd actually have a dashboard then to go through these calls and, um, monitor which ones are, you know, which ones actually converted. So call tracking is uh, an important tool when it comes to uh, these Google ads. And then, so let's talk about tracking on your website. This is where we place a pixel on your website. This is where we can track when someone goes to a specific page on a website, whether or not they're submitting a form fill, those sales could be like downloading any brochures that you have to find out more information. 
But this is what we highly recommend because this helps us optimize our campaigns um, along the way too. So the more conversions we're seeing, the more we can optimize towards those. But it just takes um, a pixel. Oftentimes, most of uh, the people, most, most clients would have a web dev team. They're the ones that can place the pixel on the website. It's a pretty easy process. And once that's on there, we're good to go to track those conversions. With that, there's two separate ways we can do that. So the one that I just talked about is placing that directly on your site. Some uh, advertisers do have what's called Google Tag Manager. Um, so this is a this makes it a little bit easier too. It's basically a, a container on the website where we can just drop that pixel in there, and then um, more off to the races, we're able to track those conversions through the Google Tag Manager as well. Um, anything else on that, Chris? No, I mean, I think the the part I want to emphasize is that tracking conversions is going to be a really important piece of any digital advertising campaign from start to finish. We can place multiple pixels within a tag manager. We can place multiple pixels on a, on a website. I highly recommend Google Tag Manager because it's designed to um, to house those properly. Whereas if we place a bunch of pixels directly on your website, it can slow down performance a little bit. Uh, but again, this is something that a conversation that we can have once we kind of get to the second phase of, of getting this onboarded. Um, but more than anything, we just want to make sure that people are aware of this so that when we send out a pixel, nobody's surprised, nobody's taken aback by it. But it's really the best way to track any campaign. And we not only want to track that end conversion, whether that's a purchase or a form fill or a reservation, but we also want to see if somebody came to your homepage and then went to your, you know, about us page or your shopping cart page and then actually made a purchase. All those steps along the way tell us and, you know, really write a story for us and tell us what people are doing on your website when they get there, what ads they're interacting with and what's working in general. So that's really how we optimize and refine these campaigns throughout their life cycle. Perfect. So let's talk about some of those optimizations. Again, there's, there's a lot of text on this, but we just wanna hit a couple highlights on here. So with the optimizations, again, these are never set it and forget it type campaigns. You can basically have a full-time job running these, you know, a campaign depending on how deep it is because you're always learning more information from the data. So one thing um, we did wanna know, all the SEM campaigns, we do have a 90 day minimum on those. And the reason why is, those first 30 days is called what's called the learning phase. Um, and by that, we mean we're learning all the data that we're getting. We're seeing where people are clicking. We're seeing which keywords are working. We're seeing the difference in the cost per click on each of these. So a lot of data is, is what we're analyzing those first 30 days, which then we can take into the month two, month three, and really start to optimize as we go, as the campaign goes to make it more successful. But then some of the things that we're optimizing too is called pacing. So we have a specific budget and that goes throughout the entire month. We don't want it to be spent out in the first week or two. We want to make sure that it's pacing to be out throughout the entire month. So that's a question we get often, um, you know, will my budget run out? No, it might run out possibly three o'clock, four o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, but that's what we're being very cognizant about and making sure you're going to be out throughout the whole month. Um, the targeting, we're always checking that targeting as well. That could be down to the zip code, um, the keywords, whatever that might be. Again, we're looking at those keywords. Um, we're reviewing search term query, <laughs> query report. So this is um, just wants to make sure that whatever people are searching, that's what we're showing up for. Everybody's search is different. Chris could use a different keyword than what I'm using. Brooke could use a different one as well. But we want to make sure however someone is searching, if it's a service you can offer them, we want you to be showing up. And then the ads too, we're always reviewing the performance of those ads. So there's a lot that's going into this on the back end to make sure that it is as successful as it can be. Um, so that's super important to keep in mind. Chris, were you gonna add something? Yeah, and I would also say that when we build out a campaign, we do send a template over that shows you kind of, here's where we're gonna start. Here's our starting point. Here's what our initial structure looks like. That will look pretty different than what it looks like three months after the campaigns run. Um, so I would, I would encourage everybody to be somewhat flexible in their thought process when it comes to paid search, because there's a lot that goes into it, and there's a lot that we're going to learn in those first 
30, 60 days of the campaign. And after the first 30 days of the campaign, we tend to start making larger optimizations. So we always look at the first 30 days as that learning phase. And then we want to make sure that we're really making this as robust as possible. And that it goes for every campaign, whether they're spending you know, $10,000 a month or $1,000 a month. Like we want to make sure that we're putting the same efforts into all of it. And we have a great team of people that's really dedicated to doing that on a daily basis. Perfect. So let's get into a little bit of reporting here. So once you're up and running, you will have access to a dashboard that's going to go over everything on the right here. We've got impressions. You can compare period over period, clicks, click through rate. Uh, more importantly, some of those conversions, the conversion rate, cost per conversion. So on these next pages, we break it down a little bit more. So this is an, an overall view. So impressions, what that means is when someone searches for plumber, water town, your ad shows up. That's an impression, but unless someone actually clicks on it, you don't have any money coming out of your budget. So when I've, re when I've referred to the cost per click a few times, like right here, that's when that money actually is taking out of your pool for the month. So you're kind of getting the free advertising when your impression shows up um, for an awareness. You know, People could be more familiar with your name once they see, even if they don't click on it, they could maybe directly search for you a week later when they really need when they're dire and they really need your services. So keep that in mind. Um, so we'd have impressions, the clicks, click through rate. These green numbers underneath here shows the month over month numbers. So this has been a super successful campaign. Um, everything is up month over month. We can track the conversions, conversion rate, spend, cost per conversion, um, impression share. This shows how many times your ads showing up as opposed to your competitors. So we always want to make sure that you are um, you have a decent amount of impression share, but that is part of the process too from the beginning where we would look at the audit and see how much budget it would take to have a decent impression share. And then as we go to, we might increase budget um, just to get you showing up a little bit more, just depending on how the campaign is performing overall. And then we go a little bit deeper here. Um, speaking of conversions, so we can have up to five that we're tracking. So this is an example for a restaurant group. Order online is a, a, one of the important conversions, along with reservations, order catering, and then that call extension number where someone's calling directly and making a reservation. Each of these with that pixel, we're able to track all these conversions and see the performance of the campaign. Also, the keywords. This is just a snippet of some of the uh, top performing keywords, but it'll break down each one and show how many impressions, the clicks, the click through rate, more importantly, those conversions and cost per conversion. Um, so it's very detailed reporting that's transparent to you. You'll be able to see this as a campaign, um, as it takes off and as it's performing. So then if you see anything you might have questions on, that's where you can reach out to Rudy, say, maybe we should talk about this one. How can we improve this? And it's a you know ongoing process. We want your feedback along the way to make sure everything is in line with your expectations. And this is also a tool that our team is going to be utilizing as well. So that not only are they going to be looking at Google Ads and Google Analytics, but they will also be looking at this at our reporting um, just to make sure that everything is kind of falling in line with the way that it should throughout the life of the campaign. So a lot of work goes into it, a lot of oversight, um, and everybody's working to make sure that these are performing as 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 well as possible. And then finally, we can get down to those specific zips that you're targeting and break out the impressions and conversions by those zips. So again, that can help us uh, optimize towards the ones that are performing the best. And then we can also get down to even mobile, desktop, and tablet, what's performing best out of these different platforms as well. So as you can see, it's super, <laughs> there's a lot of information here, a lot of data, um, but that's what we're here to help with too, to dissect all this, go over it with you. Ideally, each month, we like to go over this each month just to see where we're at and then tweak it as necessary. And then with Google Analytics, um, what we like to do is get access to your Google Analytics because that gives us a deeper view into what's, what a consumer is doing once they get to your website. All this previous reporting is going to be what happens when someone sees the ad, um, what kind of action they're taking with that. And then once they get to the website with the Google Analytics, we can see how much time they're spending on the website. Um, you can set up conversions as well through Google Analytics. 
um, see if they're bouncing, um, things like that. So it's important for us to have access to that as well, just to make sure um, another step along the way to make sure that this is performing up to our expectations. And I would say it's not a requirement. We are happy with read and analyze access. It just gives us another layer of in-depth reporting that we can look at as we run the campaign. So um, a lot of times we find that people may have issues logging into their Google Analytics, that kind of stuff. We can help with all of that, uh, but certainly just gives us that additional insight into the campaign. Perfect. And then just some of the reasons why I work with us. Number one, we're a Google, Google Premier Partner. And what that means is Oftentimes, Google changes algorithms up. They're going to let us know immediately. We'll know um, more before like, public knowledge, which means your campaigns will not be interrupted. Um, we were, you know, we'd, we'd be aware of the um, algorithm change and everything would be uh, cruising along as is, status quo. Um, and then the ops team that is um, setting these campaigns up and then monitoring them they're actually incentivized to achieve your goals. So again, it's not that set it, forget it. Um, they're looking at this constantly and every campaign's different. We, it's not like a cookie cutter process. Every campaign is going to have different goals. Every advertiser has different website with a different conversion metrics. So each one is, is we take a deep dive in each one to make sure it's set up properly. We have the reporting dashboard and then we are Google Ad, AdWords certified. So, um, top tier team that we have here <laughs> and we are we're here to you know do the best we can with you and work with you throughout the whole process we do have a case study here um just showing that uh we ran a campaign for a tire shop so obviously they want to sell more tires so bottom line is though we ran um for a year and they saw basically a 10 time increase in conversions so when people were searching, they were shown, they got more familiar with the brand, clicked convert and um, very successful campaign. With that, there's a lot of information. <laughs> How's everybody feeling? I'll put it back to you, Brooke, to see if we have any questions or if Rudy, Rudy, if you want to add anything as well. I think Rudy hopped off, but thank you so much, uh, Nancy and Chris. This was great information um and really builds on a lot of the other topics we've been talking about so i will encourage everyone to catch those recordings as well if anyone has any questions please type them into the chat box there or if you're more comfortable um, unmuting you're welcome to do that as well as i always say no question is too silly or too small this is an opportunity for us to really learn and understand how these things work so that we can try to imagine how they might work for each of um, our own businesses but also these folks are available to help you understand that individually uh, for your business and your goals as well so um, yeah, if there are any questions, please type them uh, into the chat or unmute yourself. Everybody's quiet today. <laughs> we had a lot of questions the other day, so maybe everybody's all <laughs> questioned out. Yeah. Well, one thing I'm thinking about as um, having watched all four participated is kind of where to where to begin and, and how to know which tool is the best ROI to start. Or is that something that you um, you help kind of navigate uh, with a potential client just to better understand that, I guess, if you can't do it all right away? You know, I think the best way to approach it is for us to sit down and speak to you about your business and get an idea of what your goals are, what your budgets may or may not look like. Um, obviously, we want some sort of guideline on budgets, but we can always make recommendations along the way. Um, you know, I don't find digital advertising to be a one size fits all type of solution. We really want to make sure that we understand your business. We want to make sure that we're making recommendations that are going to be advantageous to you and to your audience. Um, so what I typically recommend is you allow us to, to build out a proposal for you. And, and that could be a good, better, best solution. So maybe we've got, you know, we start with display in the good section, and then we do display and paid search in the second one, and then display, paid search, and streaming TV in the third one. 
something like that, it gives you some options and it also allows us to really fine tune what it is we're, we're recommending that's gonna be most advantageous to you. It also depends on if you are an e-commerce platform versus a brick and mortar store. Um, all of those things are going to factor in. When it comes to something like paid search, there's gonna be a lot of other factors that play into you. Something like a plumber or a home services company tends to have a much higher cost per click because there's a lot of competitors in most areas. So we wanna take that into consideration as well. If you only have $1,000 to spend and the average cost per click is $30, that tends to eat budget up rather quickly. So we wanna make sure that we may, we may wanna start with some other solutions that might get your name and branding out there a little bit better. And then we start working in some paid search once we have a little bit more budget for it or something like that. Really the point is there we want to make sure that we take all that into consideration as recommendations. Great. Thank you, Chris. Um, we did have one question. And again, we encourage you to ask any questions. Um, this person says, you mentioned that your firm has a 90-day ad campaign minimum. Is that an overall recommendation? Um, and should ad words change seasonally? Absolutely. I'm changing on it, changing seasonally, especially depending on your business. That again is something that we would want to know up front. Um, I wouldn't recommend running a campaign for less than 90 days. Technically, we could do it. We don't. Um, but the reason is, is that we have that 30 to 60, 30 to 60 day learning phase. So by the time you get to that like 30, 45 day phase, then we're out of the learning phase and then we're starting to make optimizations that really are, are gonna help your campaign a lot. That learning phase includes Google learning everything about your business and util util utilizing its algorithm to make sure that it's promoting or that we're bidding on the right keywords, it's promoting properly, we're, util we're using the right extensions, those types of things. So 90 days to me is bare minimum. I would recommend typically that you run for, you know, it, especially if it's seasonal, probably a 12 month campaign so that we can change so that it, it goes through the learning phase with your website and with your information. And then we can make those seasonal changes throughout the life of the campaign. Great question and very helpful answer. Um, any other thoughts people are having on the line, questions at all? No more questions. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for joining today. Thanks to Chris and Nancy for the in-depth presentation. Um, and just 